Welcome to the Minds Your Business Show. I'm your host, Tony Calloway, the private money godfather. And folks, you are in for a treat today. The Veterans Family Assistance Center and their executive director, Dominique Williamson, is going to be our guest. And I absolutely promise you that if you're a veteran or you know anyone who is, you better go get them real quick so they can tune in. And so we're going to be back in just a few minutes to share with you how the Veterans Family Assistance Center is here to serve veterans to make sure they get their benefits. So you stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Mind Your Business Show. I'm your host, Tony Calloway, the private money godfather. And as I said before, we're here today with an outstanding gentleman who is, has a passion for serving veterans. And so I'd like to introduce you to my good friend here, Dominique Williamson, the executive director of the Veterans Family Assistance Center. So everything going well with you, Dominique? Oh, yes, it is. All right. Well, we're certainly glad to have you here on the Mind Your Business Show. So... Uh, you know, I've gotten to know you a little bit just in, uh, I guess, good circumstance as far as I'm concerned, because being a veteran, you're a veteran. Uh, certainly there are many veterans here in our beauty, viewing audience. Uh, you've got a an organization that is dedicated to ensuring that veterans get all the services, all the benefits that are associated with their service to our country. So let's just start off by getting to know you a little bit. So if you can, uh, you know, in a few minutes, tell us a little bit about where you, I'm from the country folks. I say, you know, where you're from, who you folks, that kind of thing. So if you share that with our audience. Okay, so uh, giving you just a little bit of a uh, background of who I am. You know, my name is Dominique Williamson. I'm a 20 year uh, retired army veteran. I uh, made it to the rank of our uh, first sergeant. Uh, uh, originally from uh, Kingston, Jamaica, and uh -huh. I migrated to uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, uh, where I joined the military from, and it's just been a great ride. Uh, just to give you a little bit about our organization, uh, we started the Veterans and Family Assistance Center based off of, you know, something that I personally experienced. Okay. Uh, you know, I was fast tracking through my military career. I got to the rank of E8 in 13 years. Wow, and so awesome. in my mind, I was going to make Sergeant Major, but on my 16th year, I was in Afghanistan. I got injured with some life-threatening uh, injuries. I had blood clots that traveled to my lungs from an injury that I sustained. Uh, when I came back from the theater, I was medevaced uh, back to Fort Hood, Texas. Then they brought me here to Fort Benning, uh, Georgia. Uh, once I returned to Georgia, I uh, found out that my career was going to be over with. Uh, it didn't sit well with me. Yes. Uh, but uh, uh, after about 19 years and seven months, they did finally conduct my med board and they finished it. Once it was finalized, they told me that I did not have enough time to retire. So I was five months short. Wow. Uh, with that being said, you know, it upset me a little, but it caused me to do some research. And in doing the research, I uh, came across some programs that would allow me to stay in for those additional five months. So then it dawned on me, if they have this program, how many more programs do they have? Yes. Uh, so from there, I retired from the military, got my 20 year, and then I connected with the Wounded Warrior Project in which they sent me down to uh, Jacksonville, Florida, where I went to Florida Coastal School of Law for a period. Then they taught us everything about the VA system, flew us up to New York, which was great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was, yeah. Uh, you know, then we work with the uh, regional office up there just to get some on-hand experience. Mm -hmm. Then I came back here and, you know, uh, once I became, you know, certified, I started, you know, helping out veterans. So for the first few years, you know, we we're fortunate to help about 2,000 veterans and you know, we have about a 98% success rate of getting wow. them 100% VA disability rating. Now, let me, uh, I mean, that's a phenomenal story that yeah. came out of personal circumstance. And so that leads me uh, to ask this question. Well, let me make the comment first that, you know, businesses, whether they're for-profit, non-profit, yours is a non-profit no. organization. Yes. Uh, they solve a problem for their customer. Yes. So let me ask if you can, off the top of your head, what are some of the biggest challenges that veterans have as far as make, in your case you know there, there are things that are not commonly known things that I'm not going to say are hidden but uh, you know things could be a benefit that uh, the veterans
Veterans Family Assistance Center is able to help resolve and make sure that those connections are made? What are some of the key challenges that you've seen the veterans have? I think one of the uh, the biggest challenges that I've seen thus far is, like you said, the information piece. Uh, you know, uh, we are a community, you know, that thrives off of information. And without having that knowledge, you won't have the resources to get your benefits. And sometimes it's not about the actual disability mm-hmm. or circumstances that a veteran has. It's just not putting it in the right format to get it uh, approved. Yes. And I'll give you a case in point. Uh, I just had a young lady call me uh, two days ago. And her conversation started off like this. Hello, I said, good afternoon, how are you doing? I'm upset and I'm frustrated. I said, why are you upset and why are you frustrated? She said, because I serve my country and I have these disabilities and I met a roadblock because I did not fill out the appropriate forms because I had no knowledge of what forms to fill out. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't about her not having the disability nor the appropriate circumstances Mm -hmm. to get the benefit, but the fact that she didn't fill out the right form because she didn't have the knowledge. So once I introduced the right form to her, now she can get her benefits. So it's just something as simple as that. And as even though it's so minute, it is frustrating because you're already dealing with your anxiety, your pain, and all of the disabilities that you have incurred throughout your military service. Right. But then you come to the roadblock of the lack of knowledge. Exactly. And so because of that, that's one of the biggest piece of the puzzle that we have seen. Secondly, uh, it's the VA within itself, because some of the VA employees are not even abreast to the changes, wow. and they're not knowledgeable to uh, their own regulations, so we have to sometimes educate, educate. them on their own <laughs> <laughs> guidelines. Right. And you have to be very ginger with it because no one likes to be told that to you're wrong. Job. There you go. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we have been very crafty in our approach. Mm-hmm. You know, most of the times we apologize in advance <laughs> for the questions that we're getting ready to ask just so that they won't be you know, aggressive. Yes. And, you know, it's been beneficial to the to the veterans. And like I said, we've helped now to date over 3,500 veterans. Man. And we've brought back over $22 million back to their pockets. Wow, that is phenomenal. Um, so if I, if I kind of really boil it down, like you said, you, using your words, is not the disability, it's the administrative processes that, help the person qualify by whatever the regulatory statutes are to be able to get the benefits. And you're absolutely right. It's kind of like, you know, law (laughs) that, you know, if I said, uh, you know, I use this a lot of times. I said the difference between a, uh, a, uh, a felony charge and being convicted in a, uh, you know, non capital offense is one's by a reasonable doubt. Right. And if it's a feeling, it's got to be beyond a shadow of a doubt. So to the extent that, somebody is reviewing uh, a veteran's uh, claim, you know, it's got to meet the standard and certainly it's got to be documented. It's got to be, phones got to be filled out right and all the I's I's dotted and T's crossed. And so that's a large part of uh, what y'all do there at the Veterans uh, Family Assistance Center. Now, um, as it relates to veterans, we've got, you know, I, I tell people, I said, going back to the Gulf War where I was a veteran and I you know I say we've been at war for 25 some odd years Correct. that you know it didn't get all the attention and profile because it was so protracted between Iraq and Afghanistan um, but there are certain circumstances like you know when I came to the army in 82 I was 22 years old gung-ho you know and at least for myself a lot of times you have these injuries and things and as i was saying it's kind of like being in high school playing football you just walk it off right you know and things like that but then when you get 60 some years old it comes back you know where it came from you know (laughs) exactly and 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 so i think that one of the things i like to encourage folks to do is definitely be able to get in contact with the veterans family assistance center because some of these latent um injuries and 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 latent damage doesn't manifest itself into in, until sometimes later in life. And I would certainly think, as was the case for me, you don't really think about your VA benefits until something, you know, 
really causes you and then you don't know where to go. So just as we'll repeat it a few more times, tell yeah. everybody uh, how they could get in contact with you. So if you if you know any veterans or if you are a veteran, certainly uh, make sure that you get in contact with Dominique. So how do they reach you? Okay, so you can reach us in a couple of ways. Uh, number one is through our website, which is www.thevfac.com. Uh, you can also give our call, give us a call at 706-507-6787, and our fax line is 706-507-6788, and you can also send us an email to admin at thevfac.com. If you reach out to us, uh, one of our assistants will gladly assist you. Uh, but also, you mentioned something, if you don't mind me to just go back a little bit. Yes. Uh, you, you mentioned about being in the Gulf War. Mm -hmm. And so uh, going back to the educational pieces, there, there are five ways that uh, you can prove service connection. Uh, so one of those ways is by direct uh, injury. So I fell, broke an arm, it's direct. Yeah. The second way is by secondary condition. So I have a left knee pain. Over the years, I've been overcompensating with my right knee. And because of that, now it's a secondary condition. Okay. Uh, thirdly, we can get it by presumption, uh, which is what you uh, just mentioned. You know, this started back in the, uh, the Vietnam War, roughly, uh, where we had the Agent Orange, yeah. and there's a lot of presumptive disabilities. Now, you've probably heard of the Gulf War illnesses. Yes. There are presumptive disabilities. Mm -hmm. So it basically states that if you're in a location and a said degree of disability has manifest within a certain time uh, and you've been diagnosed, you can get that as a presumptive uh, disability. Uh, another way that you can get uh, service connection is by aggravation. So let's say you mentioned playing football. Right. You injured your left shoulder in high school playing football. You went through the MEP station and they did their you know, assessment of you. They say, yes, we do see that you have a left shoulder injury, but it's not going to stop you from coming in the military. Join the military, but the years of doing push-ups and pull-ups, that aggravated it. So gotcha. now it manifests to a greater degree. So you can get uh, disability based off of that. And the last way that you can get a disability is if the VA was to do something that caused a problem. Uh, I don't know if you remember several years ago where uh, they put it in the Army Times where they were amputating the wrong body parts. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, it was bad. And so if you went into the hospital, let's say you had a left knee that needed to be amputated, mm -hmm. but they amputated <laughs> the right knee. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, you know, you can get a disability, you know, based off of that. And so uh, going back to the educational piece, a lot of times, you know, we can file a claim because we have an injury. But if we don't put it in one of those appropriate categories, is, mm -hmm. it, is it a uh, presumptive disability? Is it a secondary disability? And if we don't put it in the right way, then we can meet that roadblock again. And so the reason why our organization exists is to ensure that whenever you do file your claim, you're putting it down the right channel. And not only that, but we have developed over the years a uh, great relationship with certain VA regional offices and regional managers. So we have the ability to pick up the phone and say, hey, Jim, Bob, Mary, can you do me a favor? I just submitted this claim wow. and I see that someone in your region is writing this up incorrectly. Can you review it for me? And then by, by virtue of our relationship and they know that we're not going to just call them with something that's frivolous. Right. They will pull it and then they'll correct it before it even happens. The client will never know what we're doing behind the scenes. They exactly. want to see the end result, you know. So, uh, and that's the glorious part about what we do, you know. Well, well, you know, I just want to make a point to everybody. You see, this guy's an expert, right? Okay. And the Veterans Family Assistance Center has experts that are here to help to make sure it gets done, it gets done right. And to your point, it's often not just what you know, but sometimes it's who you know and the access. And that's a good opportunity for me to bring up our sponsor, the Private Money Syndicate, where we want to power your dreams with private money. There we have experts that can help you to get the capital that you need to power your business or real estate dreams. And so I'll bring it back to uh, our expert here. This is Dominique Williamson. He's the executive director of the Family excuse me, Veterans Family Assistance Center, VFAC, Veterans Family Assistance Center. All right, so now we've talked about the injury-related uh, circumstances and the benefits that would be, uh, you know, forthcoming. 
uh, when a claim is filed and approved. Now, what are some of the other benefits that veterans often don't realize that they have because your organization is veterans families? So what are some of the uh, benefits that might go beyond the uh, veteran themselves that okay. oftentimes go, you know, people are unaware of? Right. So I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, so there are several additional benefits uh, that the family can receive. So for instance, if a veteran's 100% permanent total, uh, you know, they qualify for two types of benefits. You have state benefits as well as federal benefits. Now the federal benefits wow. will always be standardized across the border, but each state uh, does something different for veterans. For the state of Alabama, they have a great uh, benefits for veterans. Georgia, not as great. But nonetheless, you can look into your state, and it's easy to find. Just go to your state gov uh, website and just look on the veterans benefit, and it will tell you everything that you can get. So, one of the benefits that the uh, the family can receive is what is called DEA, Dependent Education Assistance. So, if a veteran is one hundred percent permanent total, their spouse or their children can go to school, wow. and they can get a stipend for going to school, which is roughly $1,300 a month. But if you're in a state that provides school benefits, so now you can capitalize off the state benefits of going to school for free and still get the federal stipend of the DEA of that 1300. So I'll give you my daughters, they, they went to school for free. <laughs> Both of them graduated from college and I have a third one that's getting ready to go soon. Yeah. Walked away with a surplus because of the benefits that came to my family. Additionally, uh, the family can get uh, medical assistance. Uh, uh, there's a lot of clothing allowance based off of you know uh, what your injuries are and what type of prosthetic devices that you have. Also, the family can uh, apply for what is called caregiver stipend or aid in attendance, which in, which is an additional benefit that goes towards you know the spouse or that caregiver for helping that veteran. Okay. Uh, and when you just start adding the dollar amount, you know it can really impact uh, someone's way of life and cause their quality of life to be extremely better. Right. Right. Now, I'm just thinking about the things that you mentioned. Um, or assuming someone goes through a military career, usually about the time you're retiring is about the time you got kids that are looking to go to college and things like that. And then there are the things that would be related to health. And you just mentioned aid attendance. So perhaps someone who's a disabled veteran is reaching, you know, 60 ish, <laughs> like myself, and older. So the, dealing with the VA is not a one time thing. No. And so I. Uh, from the standpoint, it just was an epiphany to me that a relationship with the Veterans Family Assistance Center is actually a uh, relationship that has ongoing value in making sure that people are able to go back, I won't say to the well, but go back and now things are timely as far as what their needs are yeah. that might not have been pertinent five years ago, 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and then two, you mentioned things change. Correct. Um, so um, now... Another thing is you mentioned the uh, numbers of people who you serve. Where do is, is there a geographic area of service, or do you deal with helping to serve veterans all over the country? Uh, well, I'll say all over the globe. All over the globe. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, we have uh, we have we have clients in Africa. We have clients in Germany, Belgium, uh, some in Dubai. Uh, you know, so it's just a matter of if you have the resources to get to the internet. Uh, we can support you. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, and um, the way we have gotten our clients, uh, we've never advertised. It's always been word of mouth. And, you know, that's a badge of honor to us because it's one thing to advertise and then someone sees your advertisement and come to you. But it's a different thing when I've helped Tony and then Tony tells Jim and then Jim tells Paul and Paul tells Sue you know, that's a direct reflection of the type of service that you provide. So, you know, uh, in never advertising, you know, we've helped thousands of veterans. Wow. That's awesome. Now, you mentioned uh, your, your uh, available and accessible through the web. What's your website again? Then, after the website, where is your physical location for those of us who can reach out and touch you? Um, <laughs> uh, if you would just share that. Okay. So the website again is uh, www.thevfac.com. And unfortunately, uh, we no longer have a physical location. Two years ago when the pandemic hit, oh, okay. uh, our, we, our office was right behind St. Francis on Rosemont. 
And when the pandemic hit, everyone really stopped coming into the office. So we had this great epiphany. Why are we paying rent <laughs> with this lovely building <laughs> to where no one is coming here. to? So I ended up building a office in my backyard. Okay. Uh, so we transferred all the lines and the facts there. And you will not come to my house. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no need yeah. to, I guess. Obviously, uh, everything is... is I digital. Say digital. Yeah, so, but, uh, but what we do to physically meet our clients, uh, we go to the Making Road Library and they provide us offices. Uh, uh, and so we go there and meet all of our clients right there and they provide us a private office so we can still have that face to face contact right. uh, with our clients. But most of the stuff that we do is uh, digitally. And for the personnel that's a little old school that don't have computers, we snail mail and <laughs> you mail it to us and we'll still take care of it. Okay, and uh, what is that? Because I was going to bring that up. I'm glad you uh, got ahead of me on that. What is the mailing address uh, for those who need to send documents to you or anything like that? And you would have asked me that question. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, it's a P.O. box. I think it's 8293 uh, Columbus, Georgia. All right. Uh, and All right. So you, and it just uh, and we will confirm that. Uh, Yes. All right. So we'll, we'll make sure that we get that posted so everybody can get it. Uh, so bottom line is, you know, whether physical, whether it's via, you know, digital communication or like you say, snail mail, you know, you can get in contact with the Veterans Family Assistance Center. And through this span of life of those of us who have served our country, you know, we've got these experts here who can make sure that you're able to take uh, full advantage and receive the, uh, the uh, benefits that your country it's made available to you. And there are many, uh, as Dominique has mentioned, and oftentimes, like I said, when you're 20 some years or 30 some years old, you're not thinking about the ones that would be a value or benefit or that you might need when you're 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. So that, that is phenomenal. Now, you've got a nickname, so I've heard. Um, <laughs> and I think it fits based on what you've been saying. So what is that? Uh, they call me the 100% man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. and, and so for those who may be viewing this who are not veterans, uh, what would that, what would the association be for that? Uh, so uh, I'll give you the origin of that nickname. Okay. So the origin started when I was still in the military and I was going through my process. Uh, I was a part of the SFAC and that's the reason why I called my business the VFAC. Uh, so the SFAC was the Soldier and Family Assistance Center. And at the time I was the NCYC and we had about 576 uh, wounded wars you know, at the time, uh, once I started seeing what was going on with most of them and I felt that there was a lot more that could be done, mm -hmm. I started reaching out to my civilian counterparts to grab some knowledge and they told me, you know, what to do. Uh, so I started doing a bunch of uh, memos and handing it off to the soldiers. They'll take it to their doctors or to their lawyers at the time, getting their things, their disability amended. Long story short, the first, I would say, 300 or so people that I helped as their transition, they all walked out with 100%. So uh, they changed my name from uh, Master Sergeant Williamson to, <laughs> if you need some help, go see the 100% man. There you go. Well, man. Uh, and, and so that's how it started. A nickname will earn. Um, now, the uh, the next thing I want to talk about is you have events and other things that uh, you do as part of, uh, you know, sounds like fun stuff. Yes. As part of the Veterans Family Assistance Center. Talk about some of those. Uh, yes. Yeah, so one of the uh, the things that we do, we started this about two and a half, three years ago. And unfortunately, the uh, the genesis of why we started is dealing with the suicide that's going on with veterans right now. We're losing about 22 to 23, you know, uh, per day. Wow. And so uh, what ended up happening, we went on a fishing trip in which I was invited, actually, by uh, some of my counterparts. And we went down to Panama Beach City, Florida, and we just had a ball. And so... It dawned on me, you know, if this helped me, why not do something for the other veterans? So I came back, talked with my board members, and they said, let's do it. So we started having a fishing trip down in Destin, Florida, which we do every month from April through November. It's always the last weekend of the fishing trip. And so it initially started with us just getting a bunch of veterans, roughly 12 to 15. We go down and we do fishing and fun events. And then I wanted to add a little bit more uh educational counseling piece so we started bringing down different personnel which we do have a counselor we have three that we've partnered with that comes down on every trip with us so we have an on-site counselor psychologist or licensed clinical social worker that helps us to 
you know, navigate through some of our emotional crisis. And then they also do classes for us during that event. And then we all go out fishing and we go to dinner and lunch and just have a great time. And then we exchange phone numbers and a lot of research resources because you may know something that I don't know. Yeah. And so we have our big butcher board and we put our research uh, resource board on there and it's just been uh, beneficial. Uh, then we progressed it to where now we do one uh, per year for veterans and their families. So we, uh, spouses, excuse me, we bring the spouse down there, which we just had one uh, a couple weeks ago. And we invited a, uh, a professional to come down and do some uh, intimacy relationship type, you know, uh, activities on the beach. And the spouses loved it, wow. you know, so it was a hit. And we have some self-defense classes and stuff like that that we're, we've been doing. We also do uh, community you know, uh, you know, our relations, uh, we've adopted a couple elementary schools. Okay. This started during the pandemic where we partnered with a few of the principals and started, uh, you know, uh, providing food and assistance to some of the ele elementary schools kids, because we all know that a lot of these kids, because they're somewhat impoverished, mm -hmm. school is the way that they get their food. And when the pandemic hit and everyone was, you know, at home, you know, you took away resources that was well needed. So we talked with some couple of the schools and uh, we decided to start investing, you know, in the schools and start helping kids out. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, Dominique, um, is, you've laid a lot out. And for those of you who are watching this uh, on Beam 7 and for then those of you who see this on YouTube, uh, the Veterans Family Assistance Center is here as a tremendous resource for veterans, their families. And uh, not only does uh, Mr. 100% uh, help veterans to get the uh, benefits that they're entitled to from injuries and things like that, but like you said, you know, there are, there are other things, the education and the aid and assistance, and there's probably dozens more that veterans may need through their lifetime right. uh, that the Veteran Family Assistance Center is there to support. So one more time, uh, how do people get in contact with you and... Uh, and uh, yeah, how do we reach you? Uh, so you can give us a call at 706-507-6787 or fax to 706-507-6788. You can also send us an email to admin at thevfact.com. And our website is www.thevfact.com. And we also have a Facebook page. Uh, and you can just type in Veterans and Family Assistance Center and you'll see our logo and you can reach us there. We do a lot of uh, uh, communication through Facebook, you know, cause people send us direct messages and we right. can answer it right on the spot, you know. So uh, so please, by all means, reach out to us. And if you don't mind, I'll put this plug in. Go ahead. You know, we talked about some of the things that we're doing, one of our upcoming projects, which is gonna be a large project, which is gonna take a village to do this one. Now we do have a severe homeless veteran crisis in this city. And so we have come together uh, with a few partners uh, that we're going to try to develop a transitional center for homeless veterans. It's going to consist of a 30 uh, unit uh, female veteran home, uh, uh, a 70 unit for male veterans. It's going to have a full uh, commercial kitchen so that we can feed the homeless. Uh, it's going to have a computer lab on there and it's going to have a gymnasium as well as a uh, uh, washing uh, facility for them to wash their clothes. And we'll be doing a lot of classes. Uh, we'll con connect them with other resources so that it's a one-stop shop. Uh -huh. uh, saying all that, it costs money to do that. Yes. And so, you know, anyone that would like to partner with us, you know, you do know that if you do partner with us, that your seed is being sown in good grounds and you'll see the product of it. And for every veteran that comes through our program, you can feel proud to say, I, ha I assisted in that. Wow. Well, man, make sure you count uh, me and the uh, private money syndicate in as yes, part of supporting that effort. I appreciate it. Uh, so thanks for being with us today, and thanks for sharing with our audience. Um, and again, the Mind Your Business show was sponsored by the Private Money Syndicate, where we power your dreams with private money. So you can contact us through our website at privatemoneysyndicate.com, or you can call us directly at 706-888-3719. We've had Dominique 
Williamson, the executive director of the Veterans Family Assistance Center, you know, just sharing all kind of great information. And so got to got to go. But uh, as I always say on every episode, if you're going to go in business and stay in business, you've got to mind your business and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.